How are we doing on this fine Monday evening? Welcome back to another episode of the Big D Podcast on the Spunky Spectrum Sports Network. I am back for my weekly, maybe bi-weekly contribution to the show, and it's been a pleasure as always. We are just getting kicked into NFL free agency, but before we get too far into that, make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, Dylan's always got great content coming out. Uh, Also, if you prefer to stream on any of your most popular music streaming apps, Spotify or Apple Music, follow along there as well and subscribe to the show. As I bring in the biggest Jacksonville Jaguars fan on this side of Duval County, your host with the most, the big D himself, Dylan. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing pretty. I'm doing great, Alex. Uh, it's a legal tampering period, so uh, does that mean either one of us will get a hundred million guaranteed? Hey, I mean, you know, I'll sign the check right when it's put right in front, or I'll sign the contract when it's put right in front of me. You can, you don't have to doubt that. As long as we are not having, as long as yesterday we didn't have any conversations with Tom Brady or anyone else. Wait until today, Chris Greer, Stephen Ross, just please. Any communication, I hope at least left until today. Wait, wait, you're talking about the uh, 5,000 penalties that the Miami Dolphins owe for legal tampering or illegal tampering? I mean, I think there was a bit of an over, over-exaggerated over story. We didn't even sign the man, but, you know, it is what it is. That's in the past, and the Miami Dolphins are all about the future. Wait a minute, I thought you were going after Sean Payton, too. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get him either, so I don't understand what the big hoopla is all about. But, you know, I think I think we're pretty happy with Tua Tungvaluho and Mike McDaniel uh, leading the Dolphins for the next couple of seasons. You may, hope Mike White, you may hope Mike White doesn't start any game six, otherwise you guys are in trouble. I mean, you're probably right about that. 17 games at Tua means a, uh, means a deep playoff run, I'll tell you that much. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So wait, two is now the 15th best quarterback in football? Uh, Take away that first one and you might be in the ballpark. Oh, wait, that's right where Trevor Lawrence is in my QB rankings now. And then you add the one and there's Trevor Lawrence. Oh, come on, man. (laughs) Nah, you you made a good point before the show when we were having the same exact banter about – uh. You know, his his very nice playoff win. I'll give you the credit on that when he deserves it. But uh, other than that, it's time to get kicked into the show. Too too much banter back and forth between our teams. Well, let's get right into it. I think uh, some of the biggest moves, you know, uh, everyone's been expecting a big quarterback name to be on the move. Uh, I think everyone knows who that is, and I think everyone knows where he is planning to go. But that is not who we're talking about because that has not happened yet. The quarterback on the move that we are discussing at the current moment is maybe the most handsome player in the NFL, Jimmy Garoppolo to the Vegas Raiders, replacing Derek Carr and throwing to his former roommate, teammate, and best friend, Devontae Adams. Jimmy Garoppolo, Vegas Raiders, what do you think? Uh, once, once Derek Carr left, you sort of knew Jimmy G would end up in Vegas because obviously Josh McDaniels, and Jimmy G know each other from their time in New England. Jimmy G could pick up the system in an hour and a half. And whether and you look at it, Vegas still got a ton of weapons. Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, uh Darren Waller and Josh Jacobs together with a great left tackle. So I mean the Raiders offense looks like they'll be pretty decent. I mean, maybe the Raiders need a backup plan, but Jared Sims in Denver, so um, that's not going to happen. I still think the Raiders may need a backup plan because uh, Jimmy G is not going to start 17 games because he's like a walking injury, but, you know, Jimmy G can play, and he can be efficient. I mean, the Raiders still have to improve that defense, so now with the number... What is it? Seven pick in the draft. Instead of, I mean, Vegas tried to move up for one, couldn't do that. So now Jimmy D is like a plan B or maybe a plan C because I think Aaron Rodgers would have been the plan B, but we sort of know where he's going. Going, but I think Jimmy D's Vegas is playing. I don't see the Raiders getting in for one of these quarterbacks, whether it be Bryce Young, Stracy Stroud, Anthony Richardson. Well, Levin, so 
Jimmy G is going to be the Raiders starting quarterback right now. I am a little befuddled why they gave him more guaranteed money than Geno Smith, but that's a story for another day. Yeah, I think you make a good point. I mean, it's not it's not the sexy move of of an Aaron Rodgers of a trading up to the number one draft pick. I mean, it's it's going to make headlines because it's a it's a QB one on the move, but. You know, I, I think the Raiders, as you said, have a lot bigger problems. Um, they had to address the quarterback position, obviously, with Derek Carr moving on. But you know, it's 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 a guy that you bring in. You know what you know what Jimmy Garoppolo is going to give you. Maybe eleven games, and he's going to be pretty pretty decent, pretty good for those eleven games. Now he's got um, <clears throat> Devontae Adams to throw to all the guys you mentioned. Josh Jacobs, a solid running game. And, um, you know, obviously Darren Waller as well. So it, it, it's a move that I don't think really moved, turned a lot of heads. I think it was, like you said, pretty expected with the Mike McDaniel or Mike McDaniel, Josh McDaniels connection. But, you know, it's nothing that's going to really bring up the headlines, I'd say. It, it's a solid move that is going to put them, I think, similar to the same position they were in last year, which is probably a team that should be doing better that probably won't. But other than that, it's 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 kind of a man move, but it's something. I mean, he's better than than some of the other alternatives out there. So I, I guess I don't know. It, it depends what what Vegas is lo- really looking to do. I mean, if they're trying to be more of the same, I mean, you want to focus on defense in the draft, maybe add a couple free agents uh, throughout this window. But you know, it's definitely not a, the big splash that could have been made over in Vegas. Um, here's an interesting question. Speaking of quarterbacks, we talked about Jimmy G just now. When, I mean, do you think Aaron Rodgers ends up a Jet or a Jet staying Green Bay? Or is there a chance he decides, you know what, I'm done playing and I'll, and I won't get that, what is it, $60 million? I think it's one of two options. I think he's either going to go to the Jets or he's going to retire. I, I I think he's kind of fed up with just the back and forth with the Packers. He's been frustrated. He's been frustrated with the front office for, for pretty much ever since they drafted Jordan Love. It seems like he's been on the way out for season after season. He's contemplated retirement. I don't think he's going to retire. I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, I, I'm pretty confident probably in the next 48 hours we hear the news that he uh, gets gets traded to the Jets. It is a little interesting to me, though, because the Jets, and I mean, other than the Raiders, the Jets were really the only team that Aaron Rodgers had been linked to uh, upcoming, leading up to this free agency period. And the fact that the tampering season started, you see all of these moves happening, you see all these players getting signed. And the fact that it hasn't happened yet is, is just interesting to me because, you know, he went on that darkness, that, that, that dead – black pitch black dark retreat to clear his mind he said he was going to come out of it with a decision and here we are a couple weeks later at the very i mean the true start of free agency and the jets and the packers are both sitting there like well we don't really know what to do because we're just kind of waiting on mr number 12 to to make up his mind so I mean, I don't think he's going to go back to Green Bay. Like I said, I think it's just time for him to move on. And whether that's, you know, hanging up the cleats or whether that's going with the Big Apple, I think he's still trying to decide which one is right for him. Although after these moves that the Dolphins have been making, I don't know if he wants to go up against that defense twice a year. So maybe that's why he's taking so long to make his decision. But, you know, that's 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 a topic for a little bit later on in the show. Does this feel – this? I mean, be honest – this Aaron Rodgers saga feels like Brett Fall 2.0 because guess what happened 15 years ago when you were probably, what, how old are you now? Uh, I'd be just about 12. Okay, so think 15 years ago, Brett Fall had been the Packers starting quarterback for like 15 years. And they retired and, four times. And guess what happened? He came. He retired, came back, and was traded to the New York Jets. And Aaron Rodgers has been the Green Bay Packers starting quarterback for how many years? Fifteen years. And where could he end up? The New York Jets. I mean, they say history repeats itself. Why not? Why not one more time? 
wait a minute, wait a minute, say, wait a minute, not just say, it, but spell it out. H i s t o r y r e p. No, I mean the uh, no, I mean the team that could the team that could trade for Rogers. Oh, I you're trying to set me up, Dylan. I see what this is. All right, I got you. J e t s suck suck suck. <laughs> You only say that because you love the you love a team in that division. I mean, you know, it's it's fortunately it's one of the few teams who have been, if not more miserable, uh, just as miserable as Dolphins fans have over the past two decades. So, I mean, granted, they did make it to an AFC Championship game, but other than Ooh. that, the Jets have been through. Yeah, you're right. The Jets have been through, uh, if not more misery, uh, just as much misery as us Dolphins fans have. Hey, maybe. hey, but um, I mean, it would be interesting. I'm not sure why Rodgers would want to leave. I mean, maybe the pack. I think the pack was a little pissed with Rodgers because Rodgers hasn't come to the all season walkouts. When you see Mahomes, Allen, Burr, all these great quarterbacks come, Aaron Rodgers is hosting Jeopardy or in La La Land, whatever it is. But I, B, if you look at it, what's the easier division? NFC North or AFC East? You can attest to it because you're in the AFC East. I think the NFC North's big hard uh, easier than the AFC East because you've got Josh Allen, you've got your Dolphins, the Jet defense, and Bill Belichick. Compare the NFC North. Well, yeah, Minnesota was great last year, but they went 11 and 0 one score games. That's not going to happen. Green Bay's got some. You've got a hit long history of drafting really good players anywhere in the draft. Detroit, yeah, Detroit should have made the playoffs, but you really trust the Detroit Lions two consecutive years, and then the Bears are who we thought they were. I don't we, know, John. I, th- I think I disagree with you here. I think, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree that the AFC East is a better division than the NFC North, but even still, the NFC North, I mean, you still have Minnesota, where, yes, you're right, with the, with the one-score games, obviously that's not going to happen again. But if they're winning by two scores at the end of the game, then it doesn't matter. And the Detroit Lions who you mentioned, I mean, the Lions have to be one of the most young, up-and-coming team franchises in the NFL. They've got a heck of a head coach and and some young stars that are really trying to trying to blossom into, into I mean, into superstars. Uh, I mean, the Bears... They just got a haul for the number one pick. They're not ready yet, but they still have a dangerous quarterback with Justin Fields um, and a, a, a boatload of assets, including DJ Moore. Then you look at, I mean, it's it's not, I, I think the division is easier, but then you look at the flip side and you look at the New York Jets and and, and with the and with the the Green Bay Packers too is what are we what were we talking about for 60% of the season last year? What are the Packers doing? It just seems like the Packers the last couple seasons and last season for the first half for 60% of the season last year, they didn't look like they knew how to play football. They, they couldn't get the ball to to their playmakers. They were, they just looked lost out there. And then you look at the New York jets who, as much as I hate to admit it, a heck of a head coach in Robert Sala, uh, one of the best young defenses in the NFL with one of the best up and coming cornerbacks in a mod sauce Gardner. Then you've got some stud young offensive talents with Brees Hall, um, you've got the receiver whose name is completely slipping my mind right now, but um, you know, you've got, there's a lot of talent on that New York Jets team. If I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm thinking, look, I've been disrespected by the front office. They drafted a quarterback three years ago for for whatever reason, when they could have drafted someone to help me out and help our team out actively at the time. Whereas Jordan Love is still sitting on the bench minus a handful of games last season. It, it, it just seems like the Packers have been waiting for Aaron Rodgers to leave. And now that the time has come where it actually might happen, I feel like he wants to kind of to jump on that. I, it just seems like he's been disrespected. And honestly, as much as I hate to say it, I think the Jets would be a good football team with Aaron Rodgers. And I think he knows that. That's why I'm just a little surprised why we haven't seen the news break yet, because he's had all this time to think about it. The, the free agency has started. I don't understand what's really because it's up to him. I mean, the teams are ready. The teams are ready to make the deal. The Packers are like, if Aaron Rodgers wants to move on, let's get something for him and let's move on. And the Jets obviously want a quarterback, that's something that they haven't had in 30, 40 years. So 
I, I think it, it it's just a little confusing, which is why I think retirement is is one of the two options, because it, it, if it was going to happen, I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet, because I think it just makes that much sense. So I don't know. I, I Like I said, I think we're going to find this answer in 48 hours, but we'll see. Um, Quickly, what uh, three, uh, five words, five word answer here. What could the Packers get for Aaron Rodgers? I'm going to do six words, not as much as you think. Uh, I think, you know, he's at the end of his career. I, I think the Jets know that that he's ready to move on, not as much as you think. Two first round draft picks. All right. You heard it here first. All right. All right. Uh you like trades? Well, South Beach is your team because seemingly the Miami Dolphins have been making have made more trades than most NFL teams the past year. Last year they got Tyler Kill from the Chiefs. Then the trade deadline got before the deadline got Bradley Chubb from the Broncos. And yesterday they got this guy who you may have heard of. I don't know. He Won a Super Bowl with the Rams. He's also a superstar and one of our favorite teams on this podcast and uh, has now transitioned to the south side of the state. Yes, the Miami Dolphins have traded for Jalen Ramsey. And not only have they traded for Jalen Ramsey, they had absolutely fleeced the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, it, it's one thing to trade for a top three at worst cornerback in the NFL, probably a lock Hall of Famer. But when you trade for that Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, and you give up a third round draft pick and a third string tight end that has one catch in his NFL career, it's just, I, I get the Rams wanted to get rid of the contract and maybe get rid of a bit of the personality, but you got to get something better than that. I mean, if you would have told me 365 days ago that in, in 365 days, the Miami Dolphins would have Tyreek Hill, Bradley Chubb, and um, Jalen Ramsey, and we'd still have any draft picks in the next couple of years, I would have called you crazy. So, you know, it's it's a fantastic place to be in South Beach right now. To be honest with you, when I heard this deal, I'm like, the Rams the, the Rams are tanking, but then I realized maybe the Rams want to just make a good offensive team because if you look at the Rams' offense last year, it was pitiful. The offensive line was a wreck. I mean, who would the Rams receive us outside Cooper Cup and maybe a shell of Allen Robinson? Yeah, I mean, it, but Hunter Long is not going to be the guy to turn your offense around. I mean, and by the way, and by the way, I think you were the. By the way, were you there? That were you there when Hunter Long made that one catch against the Giants a couple years ago? I thought it was against the Jets. I wasn't there. I went to the Jets game two years ago, and I went to the Texans game last year. I don't okay. think I was there. Okay. But, you know, I, you know, obviously with, with Mike Gesicki's contract coming to an end, there's, there's some, there's some blurred lines there and I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I, I think the Rams scrolled down too, too far and meant to click on Mike Gesicki for the trade offer. And they accidentally, their, their controller was stuck or something and it skipped down to Hunter Long because I mean, Mike Gesicki in a third round pick sounds a little bit, I still don't even think it's 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 the right deal, but uh, it sounds a little bit more respectable and a little bit closer of a deal than, than Hunter Long in the third. But, you know, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm very happy. Props to Hunter Long. I hope he becomes a top two tight end in the, Senate, in the NFL, but I don't see it. And I see Jalen Ramsey coming in and contributing immediately to those Miami Dolphins defense, especially with Vic Fangio coming in. Here's what I would say. Jay Ramsey does not look like the same player I know. He's 29, and I'm not sure Jalen Ramsey's a guy. Like, he's not Aaron Donald. He's not Chris Jones. He's not a guy. He's talent, but he didn't play well last year. You know, was faltered because the Rams sucked, or yeah. Jalen Ramsey wrote in as a player because we've seen cornerbacks the road and then have bounced back. Darius Lee with the Eagles, a perfect. Perfect example. 
And, yeah. and you've already got Xavier and Howell there, so why do the Dolphins need two highly expensive corners? I mean, what do you mean? Why do we – yeah, that, see the the big the big thing about it is yes, uh, Jalen Ramsey did have a bit of a down year yesterday. He's still better than most cornerbacks in the NFL, talent wise, skill wise. Xavier Howard, very down year last year. Still, he was hurt the entire season. I fully expect that he's going to be able to come in healthy this season, and it's only going to be able to help each other. The Miami Dolphins secondary had to. I don't know the numbers on this, but had to have been one of the most injured units in the National Football League. Every single member of our secondary seemed like they got hurt last season. So you just, you bring all of these pieces together. Jalen Ramsey doesn't have to cover the one, the, the number one receiver every game. You can put Xavier Howard on the number one receiver. Or Xavier and Howard, you don't have to put him on the number one receiver every game. You can put Jalen Ramsey on the number one receiver. Then you got Javon Holland in the back. You got Brandon Jones coming back from injury. I'm hearing ru- rumors that the Dolphins might be going after Jordan Poyer too. Add another safety into the mix. Just there's so much talent in that secondary. And I think the biggest move, may, I mean, maybe not the biggest move, but one of the biggest moves the Dolphins made was was getting uh, was the linebacker that they just signed from from Tennessee David um, Long was that David Long David Long yeah absolutely I mean the biggest problem with the Dolphins was was their tackling was there I mean we needed a Mike linebacker we just got for eleven million dollars five point five a year uh, five point five million a year on two on a two year deal my favorite thing to do when it, when the Dolphins signed a new player is I always love to read the comments from the from the teams that they signed the player from. And every Titans fan was screaming at their general manager. Why did you not match that offer? That's all I need to know. I know he's a stud. He's going to help on the, on the run defense. He's going to help on the pass rush and he's going to help those cornerbacks be cover a, a good, a good pass rush makes your cornerbacks jobs a lot easier. And this defense is coming together with Vic Fangio's scheme. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to watch it. I think Miami is the, I mean, if Miami wanted to make a four by hundred meter squad, you've got a pretty darn good team to do it with. I mean, did you see Tyreek Hill running the track? I mean, he's running against people who train track, and he still smoked them by two seconds. I mean, it's it's the it's the most excited I've been as a Dolphins fan. I said it before the off season. La- I said it before the season last year, and it's only growing. But now I want to see now I want to see Tyreek Hill and DK Metcalf race. Oh, it wouldn't even be close. I don't think there's a player in the league who would even come close to Tyreek Hill, but that's that's a conversation for another day. And unfortunately, these guys don't like racing against each other, so it doesn't seem like we'll ever get that answer. But I want to know, Dylan. Let's move on because I could talk about the Dolphins up until uh, the season starts. But um, I want to know your favorite deals, or or I want to know your favorite deals so far, or or what teams you think are going to be making a deal next. What do you, what do you what what did you like so far, and what do you see coming? Oh, uh, I think I was one in um, you know, I think the obvious one to me is Jesse Bates because the Atlanta Falcons needed defensive back help. They needed a safety. Jesse Bates, Bates can really play. If you saw those Bengals play, he was a key cog for that Bengal team. And I think Bates will fit in with that Falcon. Falcon squad. I mean, Falcons need every every help on defense. Went into this offseason with a ton of cap space and spent it on a really good play. Yeah. I mean, as far as me, I think I think my favorite deal so far is Patrick Peterson the Steelers. I mean, not talking Miami. I, I you know, Minka Fitzpatrick, it, it hurts me to say it because he's so talented and Miami let him walk, but just, just picturing Minka Fitzpatrick and Patrick Peterson, who again, I mean, we, he's a name that everyone knows. He might, he's getting a little older. Is he washed? I don't think he's washed, but he's, you know, I don't think he's necessarily the talent that he once was. But just picturing Minka Fitzpatrick and Patrick Peterson back there, it, that sounds like a terrifying secondary. The Steelers, you know, it, it, they're not a perfect team. They're a team that's kind of hanging around, and and we'll, we'll see what we have, what they have with, with Kenny Pickett. But I just, I mean, I think that's such a, a deadly duo to have back there in the secondary. And and if they intercept the ball, it's going to the house. Absolutely. 
And, and speaking of intercepting the ball, something I want to see is I'm really, you know, I don't know who's necessarily going to go after him. I would love the Miami Dolphins to go after him, but I, I don't think we can afford him at this point with the, uh, with the off season that we've had, but I would love to see where CJ Gardner Johnson goes. I mean, the, the guy was an absolute stud for the Eagles last season. He almost won a Super Bowl ring. And uh, depending on depending on on the right scheme and the right fit, he could really be a superstar on on it on, on an NFL defense. And I'm excited to kind of see where he lands. Uh, I do have a question for you. Who is an under radar free agent still out there, potentially impacting a team next year? I mean, underrated, I'll say the biggest free agent, maybe not the biggest, but one of the biggest free agents out there who can instantly impact the team is Levante David. I think it's a pretty obvious answer, but, you know, he's he's such a talent at the inside linebacker position. But one guy who I think is a sneaky talent who just was in a bad offensive system for the last couple of years, I'd love to see where Jacoby Myers goes. And and if you put him on a team where he's maybe the wide receiver two or the wide receiver three, I think he can really put up some numbers within the right system with the right quarterback. I think I might have taken your pick, Dylan, just based on your reaction there. But um, I I mean, he's he's talent. Obviously, the the Patriots have had quarterback issues since Brady left. Mac Jones is not the guy. Bailey Zappi might be the guy. Who knows? I don't think they know. But, um, you know, it just it wasn't the right situation in New England. He had a little bit of an injury bug, if I remember right. It just it, that, that offense was just in shambles. And we really never really got a good look at what Jacoby Myers does. But I think he can really put up some numbers on the right team. Thank dumb and I knew you were going to I knew you were going to take him. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dylan. Just say Odell Beckham. <laughs> No, I'm not going to say Odell Beckham because that's she. <laughs> uh, you know what? It seems like everybody's been picking in Philadelphia, but I think there's one piece of that Eagle offense potentially going a little under the radar. Obviously, Jason Kelsey's back there now, but I think Isaac Samal, if a team needs a guard, I think Isaac Samal is a critical piece to that team because we've seen it seems like you can't win a Super Bowl without excellent line play. I mean, look at how the Chiefs improved their own line in one offseason, getting Joe Chimney and Landon Brown and now getting a Juwan Taylor for my Jacks. Jacks, you can't have good line play. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean that's that's a good call there. And there's, there's one move, Dylan, I'm predicting right now, and it just came to me and it just hit me. I think to answer the real answer to your question, I, I, I could have left you Jacoby Myers, and I'm sorry I didn't. I didn't want to pick this guy because I didn't want to sound like I'm biased. But the number one free agent, I think, who can instantly impact a team that not a lot of people are talking about, Mike Gusecki. Mike Gusecki is going to be exploring free agency – uh, I don't think the Dolphins are going to be able to keep him. It's just there's too many names. We didn't utilize him properly. And Mike Gusecki can be a star. Mike, I mean, the talent that that man possesses, if they if he is in the system where he is not required to block, he can pretty much be a big slot receiver. Mike Gusecki and the right team can be an absolute monster. I don't think this is the right team for him based on previous comments just a couple seconds ago. But for some reason, I just feel like the New England Patriots are going to sign Mike Gesicki. It seems like the Dolphins star players that they always let go, always go to New, go to New England. The Patriots just traded Jonu Smith uh, to Atlanta, correct? I mean, it, it just, for whatever reason, the Dolphins have a history of letting really talented players go, and the Patriots always seem to be the ones to pick them up. I don't think it's the right system. I think it would be unfortunate for him if he goes there. I'd rather see him go to a team like uh, Cincinnati or, I mean, like somewhere where they can really utilize him. But, I mean, I mean, Detroit. I don't think Cincinnati. What was that? Detroit. Detroit. I think absolutely. It's a great call there. But I have a feeling he's going to end up in New England. I really hope he doesn't. But I think Mike Gesicki can instantly impact the right team. All right, Alex. So, uh, do you have any money left for? Do you have any money left to sign any more free agents? 
I think there might be another move or two coming, Dylan. I don't know how Chris Greer's doing it. I mean, we've had every No, I mean, no, I mean in general, not for your dog. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, you know, there's always money. It's the NFL, Dylan. I mean, there, there's money falling off the trees out there. Roger Goodell's got money trees in front of every NFL stadium. And it seems like the salary cap's a myth. There's going to be some big names moving. There's going to be some deals done. It's going to happen before we know it. It might even happen before we hit end on this podcast. Who knows? But there's going to be some more big moves coming. All right. Thanks for hopping on. Uh, go swim the Dolphins now. Oh, thanks for having me, Dylan. A pleasure as always. And ends up, you know how it is.